In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how I run the best offense and defense in Madden 21 and how you can too. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I just want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping people become the best Madden players that they could possibly become. And so if you want to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to click the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. It's completely free to subscribe, and it just allows you to be able to stay up to date on the latest tips and strategies right here on the channel. Now, like I said in this video, I I'm running my favorite defense and offense uh, for you guys in Madden 21, kind of showing you how to do that and what I look for in both of those. And so if you want to learn my full entire scheme, the exact scheme that I'm using in this gameplay, you can get my offense and my defense in the description of this video. On defense, I like to run the nickel 335, the nickel 335 wide, and the nickel normal. And on offense, I like to run the gun bunch, the bunch tight end, and the trip tight end offset. So on offense, I'm running New York Jets. And on defense, I am running the 46 playbook. And as you can already see, we're off to kind of a decent start here uh, with how I like to play. Uh, and the reason why I say that uh, is because what we're able to do so far um, in this first possession is we get to kick the ball off. I love to be able to kick the ball off first because that means that I get the ball in the second half first when it counts the most. And so if you have not already been doing that, that is my first piece of advice to anybody. You will find that that one little tweak will actually help you significantly on your road to wanting to be a more effective Madden player. So all you have to do is very simple little adjustment. Just simply start um, with going ahead and kicking the ball instead of just receiving it or letting the computer do it. You want to always, always, always kick to begin a game if you can. If you can help it, that's exactly what you want to do. Now, uh, as you can see so far in the video here, uh, it looks like my opponent's going to be going to some bunch tight end. This is really what we want to see here. How do we do against this right here? Um, he's off with Rodgers, and that's going to bring up a third down and long for him. So, so far the defense is kind of doing okay, right? I mean, it's kind of doing all right. Um, we just have to be consistent and simple and do our job. That's the biggest and most important thing here. So, again, we're going to go PA boot over um, here. Here, I've got that right there and then as you can see right there that's actually you know what that's a good that's a good dot I don't feel like that's gonna be super consistent for him but um, you know what got to the sideline and made a little something something happen now um, you wind up notice that he has uh, ran this offense twice here on me uh, and so I'm gonna go to the three through five wide I'm actually going to go down to my run defense right here. Let that let that safety kind of come up and clean up just like that right there. I think that negated, gave him only two yards. You know, again, that's the beauty of defense. And I talk about this a lot, the five keys to defense. And the five keys to defense, if you were to ask me that question, what are the five things that you want to look for whenever you're building an effective defense? I would tell you that the first thing that you want to be able to do is you have to be able to have a consistent run defense, a run defense that is going to be consistent and able to stop the run. The second thing that you want to have is you want to have the ability to play solid match defense. You want to have some type of scheme for match defense. It may look a little bit different depending on, you know, the situation, but that's really the, the, the hallmark of any successful thing is you want to have a good match defense. So right there, we're able to get a nice sack and bring up a fourth down. He kind of was a little bit late to that read, but the defense holds and that's going to bring up a fourth and 20 situation. Now he's actually going to go to a bunch tight in type of uh, setup here and I'm actually going to do a little bit of a something different because he's ran bunch tight end so much here I'm going to kind of set up a little bit of a user rush and unfortunately I accidentally only went off sides here um, and so I'm kind of in no man's land and he almost caught it so that's going to bring fourth and 15 that was just really bad by me I was trying to set up a little bit of a user rush off of that tight end side he ended up motioning a guy over the cross and uh, ended up putting me in a bad position. So right here, what we're going to do is we're just going to keep it uh, super, super simple. We're going to go back to kind of our standard uh, defense against this and just kind of try to keep everything in front of us here. I'm going to kind of run around here, just kind of force the pocket a little bit, and that's exactly what I wanted it to do. I knew he was going to have to force it, and he ends up forcing it down, and that's going to get us the ball back. So all in all, I think we're actually running the same uh, same offense and same defense in this game. So it should be a fun little matchup here. I think he's running the, the bunch tight end as well, uh, or I'm, I apologize, the Jets playbook as well. We like to run a little bit more bunch than what we've seen so far from my opponent. So it should be a fun matchup and we're going to dive in here and uh, get rolling on offense but the uh, second and or the third component to an effective defense in my personal opinion 
is the ability to play zone drop defense. That's what we've been playing. Uh, the fourth is the ability to play man defense. And then the fifth is the ability to blitz, to have some kind of consistent uh, pressure scheme that you're going to go with. Right here, I think he just kind of busts a coverage. But right off the rip there, we get a nice little one-play touchdown. Now on offense, and, and that's what I really like this offense, is because the reason I like Bunch so much, and really everything that you can do from Bunch and Bunch tight end, is because those two formations in particular do a really good job against cover three, cover four, and cover two. They're very, very effective against all of those different types of coverage schemes. And so you have the ability to really do a good job against Mike Blitz, uh, Mike Blitz three or cover three Mabel type of defenses. Now, the five components to an effective offense. Um, the first one is a Lombardi sweep. It's a power play. We talk about this a lot. This is a play that you you know just commit to. This is a, a top 20% type of play, right? A play that you can call 80% of the time and be very, very consistent with having great results with that. The second thing is a counter play. It's something that looks very similar to your power play, um, but it actually goes in a little bit of a different direction. Uh, right here, we got uh, a little flipping going on of the bunch. Not a bad move by him, but we're kind of in no man's land. We're not able to adjust here, and we're just going to have to kind of stay, keep it simple, and we got him running around. We should have got a sack there. He actually was able to get the ball out. But that's our first and second plays on offense. And then our third play is a constraint theory play. It's a play that looks um, it's a play that looks very similar to all of those different types of plays, but it does right there, trying to get around, and he actually ends up coming back around. Nice, nice play by my opponent. And I think I messed up. I didn't I thought I saw a gun bunch. It was actually gun bunch tight end. And that's really what he's had the most success with. I think I think bunch tight end is super underrated. I don't think people really give it the respect that it's due. Um, I think it truly is probably the best little um, offense in the entire game. And we honestly need to run it a little bit more than we do. But like I said, um, first component is a power play. Third, second component is a um, is a counter play. The fourth or the third component is a constraint theory play. So it's a play that you can you know basically that would look very similar to everything else. But what happens is you know it just basically gets it's what he just ran into. Honestly, it's something that really kind of is not really a counter play because it you know maybe you motion someone different or whatever, but you just kind of take advantage of them getting a little bit over aggressive, and so that's kind of what that that the purpose of that would be for us. Now, like I said, right here we're going to run, and right here we get clicked off. Unfortunately, um, that's just unfortunate the way that whole play. Yeah, I mean, it's just basically PA boot over, and, and that's going to be what it's going to be. So we're actually going to shift here uh, and kind of put some pressure on my opponent, a little bit of pressure here. Um, he hasn't been motioning as much, and so right there, exactly what we wanted to have happen. You know, because he didn't motion, we're able to kind of click onto that guy uh, and be in a good position. So right here, we're going to go with a little cover two um, style of defense right there. And we almost got an interception. So, so far the defense is, the defense is kind of doing its job. It's not necessarily killing it, but it's kind of doing its job. Our base zone defense. Again, I talk about 80-20 analysis so, so much. You don't, you, everyone that I know in Madden, including myself, needs to simplify their offense and simplify their defense. Every single person I know. And the reason why I say that and can say that so confidently is because it true, it's true, right? It's so true. Um, we need to simplify on both sides of the ball, and until we can do that, we're gonna have we're gonna run into these little issues here. So, little quick plays here, little quick routes. But again, this is bad pocket presence by my opponent, and that should have been an interception. We had three Packer jerseys right there. Um, didn't end up getting one, but defense is playing solid. When I talk about 80-20 analysis, and, and 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 what I mean by that is I'm really trying to hit on this. We need to simplify what we're doing because if we don't, then what happens is we we kind of don't really have a plan. Um, we're kind of doing all these little random things um, that really don't do what we need it to do, right? And that's that's me. That's probably you. You know, we've all kind of been there, but that's really as you see here. I mean, this coverage is just smothering him, and uh, we're able to get off. And, and we don't need to do anything else. We don't need to go into anything else, right? Um, until they can deal with the problem we put in front of them, we don't need to try to create another problem for them, right? We just need to continue to be simple, and uh, we need to execute at the highest level. So right here, same thing, right off rip, a little pressure off the right edge. But he's not. if he's not going to do the basic fundamentals, 
fundamentals of having hard flats, having man-to-man coverage, taking the underneath. These are the hallmarks, uh, in my opinion, of really, really, really powerful offenses. Like right here, he's going to go to cover three again. We're going to try to kind of sneak this in. And you saw the ball kind of die on us. That was what we talk about, a little bit of hesitation right there. We had the one-play touchdown. The problem is we hesitated when we threw it and ended up you know, giving him a too much time. Now here, it is very, very likely that my opponent is going to blitz me. Um, due to that, I'm just going to keep it simple and just go to the base, just try to pick up the first down, uh, You know, kind of keep the chains moving. Again, you have to realize I get ball at halftime, and that's huge. If I... If I waste that opportunity of me getting ball at halftime, I think it's super, super significant. So right here, we're going to go to a little boot over. We're actually going to go to a little bit of a different style of boot over. Um, and we're actually going to get really, honestly, I think a little bit a little bit shamed right there. Um, we're going to shift one of our adjustments here, actually. We're going to go to this bunch trail. I actually um, think that the bunch trail might be a better play, um, especially the way that I like to run it. Whoops. Whoops, 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 whoops. We did not mean to snap the ball. So now we're kind of in a do, do or die situation. We've actually got ourselves in a really bad position um, because we're trying to do too many things. Um, and so we're going to have to shift over to the boot over here and try to get ourselves and put ourselves in a good position. But what I'm going to get at here in just a moment is talking about, you know, why I actually think that the Jets dig might not be a great play um, unless you have like a hot route master type of quarterback right here. This is huge. Um, just kind of getting upfield a little bit makes us, it puts us in a fourth and manageable. So like right here, we're fourth and six, but it's fourth and manageable. It's not fourth and 50. Now I personally am not very good at kicking field goals. So because of that, I'm not going to kick this. I think I probably could, but because I'm not good at kicking field goals, I'm not going to kick it. What I am going to do is obviously I'm anticipating a lot of pressure here. So what I like to do whenever I'm anticipating pressure, I actually really like this. So I'm going to put the running back on an option route. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put um, the tight end on a little five-yard out route. So I've got a couple quick out routes here. Uh, and then I've obviously got a little flat route right here. But that's the read that I wanted to hit all along. As you can see, very simple. Uh, obviously, he was bringing off some pressure. But ends up getting a roughing the passer penalty. And this is what I'm talking about, about keeping it super, super simple. Now, with bunch trail, I haven't talked a ton about this. But the bunch trail, you have this nice little corner route. And if you can basically create, you know, essentially something like that right there, um, that is a very unique little concept. Um, very, very simple. And we're just going to take what the defense gives us there, a little quick read. He's running these man pressing, these, these man press, you know, kind of like I'm just going to go all out and blitz you. When people run that, um, you really want to try to space your field. So as you can see right here, we're going to very, you know, a very spaced out type of concept. We've got um, this nice little flat that's going to pull. Everything's going to pull out. So if they are in man-to-man -man coverage, as he was right there, tight end's able to get open. An easy read. It's really the same concept as flood. It's just we do a couple of minor little things to make sure that we're putting the user in a position where the user can't really be right. Um, and that's one thing I've learned the hard way with this is if you know they're bringing some pressure, um, you don't want to give the user an opportunity to be able to cover two people. And that's why the spacing of the bunch is so dang important. So 14 to zero and 38 seconds left to go in the half. Pretty good position, honestly. We're really, you know, whenever we're running a game, you're really the, the big target you're trying to get to is you're trying to get up by three possessions. Now, right there, he ended up really putting himself in a bad position. Now, he's got the ball on, like, the one-yard line. And so what I like to do in these situations is we're actually going to uh, push pretty down low. We're really going to try to get underneath um, and just make something happen with our coverage. We're not going to send any pressure, really. Uh, we're just going to simply do something like this here. Um you know, and then do a little cover two, kind of sitting right in here, just really kind of trying to force that right there, exactly what we were able to do. Um, you know, basically we have that nice deep half, and that's what I'm talking about. That's why I think Jets dig, um, if you don't have Hot Route Master, if you have Hot Route Master, you want to run Jets dig, but you want to run it like the play mesh. But when you don't have a hot route master, in my opinion, it actually isn't that good of a play call. So right here, we're going to go to bunch trail. 
Um, just another simple little play that we like to use, but it's very, very good for cover two. Um, it's also very good for like cover four. So we're just gonna see here how this works. Uh, cover three, and we're just gonna check it down to our little hitch. But, um, you know, the beauty of this is, and Jets Dig is a little bit better of a cover three beater uh, than Bunch Trail is. So that's something that you do have to, you know, be aware of. Smash Return, honestly, you don't have to run that play, but it is a very good, it is a very good concept. Um, I would say that, you know, it, it doesn't, that might be another play. You know, again, it all depends on the scheme that you're running from Gun Bunch to me. But if you're running a scheme like what I'm running right here, um, you know, you want to make sure that you have something like this. That's probably a bad read, but we got blessed by by Devontae Adams. Um, right here, exactly what I'm going to do, because he's kind of been doing, you know, really the same thing. Now, again, I only need three points. I don't have to score a touchdown. But just based off the way that he's kind of running his, his scheme here, uh, we're going to try to just see if we can catch him in this cover three. We are able to do that. Nice little red zone threat for Devontae Adams, but unfortunately doesn't catch the ball. That's fine. Now we're gonna now we're just gonna be super simple. Come down and we're gonna kick our field goal and go up by 17 points. To me, this is a huge, 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 huge possession because what it does is it secures a, a three possession lead going into halftime. Very difficult to come back from. That's why I like to always say, if you could get up by three possessions, you're really in the driver's seat. And you almost even, you don't want to dial it back, right? You never want to dial it back. But what you want to do is you want to play more under control and just be a little bit more aware of that. So as you can see, you know, pretty solid little, um, you know, pretty solid little possession. And now we can, when I talk about this, I'm saying, you know, with your zone drops and things like that. So we're going to 30, we're going to 15, we're going to 15, you know, even 20 yards. Um, and then this is where I am deep half city. Um, I love to run, you know, something like a deep half type of situation here. Um, you know, just kind of keeping everything in front of us here. We know these deep halves are good for that. Uh, the deep halves, if there's one thing the deep halves do a good job of, it's keeping the defense in front of you, or keeping the offense in front of you. Uh, most of the time they do that well. So that's the first half. And like I said, if you want to get the exact offense or the exact defense that I'm running, you can get that in the description. Notice that I did not select my thing right away. It's because of this right here. As you can see, he's in an onside kick. So I'm going to go to onside recover. It's a lot harder to recover an onside kick whenever you can do this. That's why I always recommend wait, 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 you know, before you before you just make a decision. You want to wait and see. You never want to come out. And it does look like he's going to go ahead and concede to us. I want to thank you for watching this video. Like I said, if you want to get the exact offense or the exact defense that I ran in this video, you can get them in the description. The offense is incredible, just $15.00. And the defense is also just $15. Thanks for your time.